So a very good morning, the student. Uh, myself, Ankur Kumar, uh, working as an assistant professor in the Department of the Civil Engineering in Kutha Institute of Technology, Gorakhpur, Uttar Pradesh. Uh, this college is affiliated to AKTU with uh, AKTU Code 525. First of all, I hope you all are doing good in this uh, Corona pandemic. Uh, as we know that uh, due to this Corona pandemic and this entire lockdown, which is going in the entire country, all the colleges, all the schools are uh, not working properly and, fun and they are not functioning these days. And we are bound to take the classes through video lectures. Uh, but we know that, that uh, we have to uh, not stop the learning. Uh, this pandemic cannot hinder our uh, learning process. So in spite of uh, Blackboard and that classroom, uh, now it, the solution is that we have to deliver the lectures to all of you uh, using this uh, video platform. So today uh, we are going to start a video lecture series on the topic that is railways, airport, and waterways. Now this course, a railways, airport, and waterways is basically designed for all the civil engineering department students of final year uh, students to, for the AKTU uh, students affiliated, all the colleges aff affiliated to AKTU, uh, that is APJ Abdul Kalam Technical University, Lucknow. So, our next semester, that is, which is going to be started from the August. And uh, as we know that due to the uh, lockdown and due to this new guideline, we have to take the classes through this uh, video platform only. So in order to cope with all the difficulties, I have came with a solution that uh, I will be delivering all the lectures of this particular course, that is, railways, airport and waterways, which has a code of RCE 076. And uh, this course is basically designed for the final year the students of the civil engineering department. Right. So first of all, I welcome you all. And in this uh, course, in this video lecture series, I will be delivering the entire syllabus by module wise. So this entire railways, airport and waterways is basically categorized into five different modules, right? So railways, airport and waterways, when we uh, abbreviate it, that is raw, when we abbreviate it, that is railways, airport and waterways. Okay, so this is the, this is the subject which is bearing a code of RCE076. Right. Now, what I have done is I have divided it into five different modules. Right. So the syllabus, when we talk about the syllabus, it goes like this. The introduction part, then the second module will be railway geometric design. Then the third module will be about the stations and yards. Then the fourth module will be about airport engineering. And the fifth module will be about harbor and docks engineering. Right. So. Uh, in this entire uh, in in this entire course in this entire uh, video lecture series we will basically focus on these five different modules okay and this different five module will be delivered to you in different lectures for example today we are uh, today we have the lecture number 1 right and tomorrow we will uh, look towards the lecture number 2 and this lecture 1 to lecture 10 will be of the module 1. In the same way from lecture 11 to lecture 10, that will be of module 2. It means each module has been divided into 10 different lectures. Right. Now, coming to the textbooks, uh, which I will refer to all the students out there. The textbooks are uh, re for railway engineering. It is uh, the standard book is by Saxena and Aurora. Uh, Airport Engineering by Rangwala and Harbour Docks and Tunnel Engineering by R.C. Nivasan. So we can see that this entire course consists of three different streams. That is 
three different streams of the transportation that is railways airport and docks harbors and engineering okay and these three different subjects will be delivered to you through three different books okay uh, so the books which i am using for preparing my lecture and my content is uh, basically railway engineering by saxena and arora airport engineering by rangwala and harbor docks and tunnel engineering by r srinivasan so this lecture will be about the development and the organization of the indian railways okay and the content of this lecture will goes like this the introduction part then advantages of railways then development of indian railways then organization of railways then railway board modern trends in railways and the last one will be the technical terms okay we'll look towards the content one by one so we'll start this lecture with a welcome note i once again welcome you all so we'll start this lecture with the introduction part and this entire lecture one is about the development of railways and organization of the railway it means we'll start from the scratch okay so we'll start from the initial part okay so before uh, starting this entire module the first thing which comes in our mind is about the transportation okay because these all are counted under transportation engineering right transportation engineering whether it's highway whether it's railways whether it's airport whether it's harbors and tunnel engineering these are are counted under the uh, topic that is known as transportation engineering okay now the question is that uh, my dear student that uh, what is the use of this transportation engineering how it can be regarded as one of the parameter one of the parameter to measure the uh, economic social and commercial progress of the country so see uh, if we talk about the transportation so transportation is basically the backbone of any economy okay you can say it is an index which measures the economic social and commercial progress of the country it means a country with a smooth and efficient transportation uh, development has a good economic social and commercial progress right because what what transportation part do it it just you you know it just link that gap between the two countries and the economic social and commercial aspects of the country basically depends on this transportation engineering now the the thing which comes in our mind is what are the different modes of the transportation right so if we talk about a different modes of the transportation engineering uh, it will be uh, land transport water transport and air transport okay now we can define this modes of transportation into three parts that is land transport water transport and air transport now we can uh, see that when we come to the land transport there are two major means of the land transport. what are those those are the roads and railways okay so about roads we have actually been taught in the third year of the our engineering stream in civil engineering department in third year third year students are being taught about the roads under the topic highway engineering right uh, now this is actually comes under the transportation engineering second and we'll talk about the railway engineering and this roads and railway both of them comes under the topic that is land transportation right now the question is that what are the advantages of railway okay we know that this comes under the land transport both whether it's railways whether it's uh, whether it's roadways right now what are the different advantages of railways which can overcome the road means why why there is need of this railway uh, in spite of this road means right so what i have done is i have divided this advantages into different categories okay and it uh, actually starts like this the first advantage what are what i have categorized for you all is political advantage right so 
uh, what are the political advantages? Okay, see, uh, if we'll talk about politically, how it is an advantageous for everybody. So politically, it what it does, it uh, you know, it joins different caste, religions, customs, and tradition. Okay, so what railway do is it simply joins all all the people of different caste of the different religions, customs, and tradition. And you know, with the adequate network of railway central administration, it has become easy and effective. So the effective way to uh, to bridge that gap between the different castes, different regions, different customs, and different tradition, it is railway. Okay, Rail, role of railway uh, during emergencies in mobilizing the troops and war equipment has been very significant. You know. Uh, whenever the war starts, okay, whenever the war starts between two different nations, for example, just take an example of India and Pakistan, when the war started in Kargil, okay, in 1999, then the first thing we want is the, uh, this movement and mobilization of the troops and wars, okay, during war, okay, troops and this equipment, okay, and railway. Railway is playing a vital role in mobilizing these troops and uh, equipment from one place to other place at a time of this kind of war and this kind of pandemic. Okay, uh, railway have also helped uh, a mass of people in migration. Okay, when people start migrating, they what they do? They just uh, switch to railway. Okay, because it is the one of the easiest and one of the effective way for the mode of the transportation, right? So this was all about the political advantages. Now, apart from the political advantage, the second we can have is social advantage. Now, what is social advantages? Now, in, when coming to the social advantages, uh, whenever uh, we feel isolated, you mean, you mean, I need to say that feeling of isolation uh, has been removed from the inhabitants of the Indian villages so because uh, before independence and before the uh, 1854 because the first railway was started in 1854 so what was uh, the problem the major problem was that these remote areas these villages of our country okay uh, which are the heart and the soul of our country actually they were feeling just they have been isolated to the some places right so now this isolation part has been removed okay this isolation parts among the inhabitants have been removed okay the social outlook of the masses has been broadened through the railway journey right now whenever we, uh, you will uh, when you will whenever you will migrate from one part of the country to the other part of the country there will be intermingling of the society as soon as there is an intermingling of the society, then there will be social outlook of the masses will be also broadened. It will be broadened. It will be changed, right? Because they will come into contact with so many people. Okay, so socially we will uh, intermingle with each and every society, right? And railway has also made it easier to reach religious importance. Uh, we know that. Uh, India is a country of the religious importance. So here the religious importance plays a vital role. Uh, the people from different castes, different reason, different creed are here. And uh, what it has done, it has bridged that gap between uh, those uh, religious uh, sentiments. Okay, now we all know that across the country there are various religious important people, uh, places and uh, what 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 it has done is that uh, it has uh, communicated all the people and it has been able to migrate these people from their home to to these religious uh, important uh, places uh, whether it's uh, Vashno Devi whether it's uh, including the Chardam anything so uh, only uh, railway plays a vital role in this type of the scenario okay. Now, it also provides the safe and convenient mode of transport for the country. Okay, when we'll talk about the uh, safe, in, in, in terms of safety and convenience, then uh, uh, railway is uh, regarded as one of the convenient and the safest mode of the transport, mode of transport among the land, water, uh, and 
air right now this was the social now the third one is uh, economic advantages okay now what are the economic advantages uh, if we'll talk about the economic advantages then the mobility of the people has increased right transport food and clothes uh, during famines okay transport the raw material to the industries okay now uh, you will say that how we can link it to the economy okay now we know that if there is any industry uh, across the country then it needs the raw material and the raw material has to be transported from the source place to the industry place where the industry has been established so what uh, what railways has done it has got a uh, effective way to transport these uh, food clothes as well as the raw material to the industry and when there will be the smooth functioning of the industry we all know that the economy of the country will boost up. okay it also provide employment to the millions of people as uh, you will not be surprised to know that 3 lakhs uh, of the people actually across our across our nation works in this uh, you know uh, railway organization it is one of the largest public sector organization of our country a mammoth of the employees have been employed so what it has done it has given the employment to many of the indians okay and uh, uh, price stabilization is also possible uh, when we'll talk about the economic advantages as well as the land values increase due to the industrial development as we know that when there will be the development of industries there will be the employment and there will also the value of the land will also be increased okay so undoubtedly collectively and submissively these all are you know contributing in the advantage part in the economic aspect of our country right now what is uh, what i have done is i have categorized one more category uh, one uh, under the advantages and that is the techno economic advantages now what is techno what are the techno economic advantages the first one is cost saving in transportation of long haul bulk traffic okay energy efficient if we will talk about energy efficiency 1 by 7 fuel used as compared to the road sector okay it has been estimated that uh, in the railways it has cut down the use of the energy how because the fuel which is used in the road sector it is 1 by 7th of that sector you know in railways one seventh of the fuel is being utilized or used for the same distance to be covered right so what 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 railways has done it, it, it is categorized under the energy efficient category okay and the third one is environment friendly and the fourth one is higher safety you know fatal accident uh, one out of ten of the road sector in india we know that many road accidents takes place in our country and many of the life are gone in that fatal accident and but when we come to the this uh, railway accident it is just minimal you, you can say one out of ten okay so we can categorize these advantages under the techno economic advantages okay now we have two uh, two departments under the land transport that is rail transport and the road transport so land transport is basically categorized into two types that is rail transport and road transport what i have done i have figured out the different uh, you know comparisons uh, among the rail transport and the road transport under the different features categories okay so the first feature is tractive resistance when we'll talk about the first feature uh, i have mentioned about the tractive resistance now you can see in the ppt which i have shared for all of you on the screen okay the in the in the rail transport the movement of steel wheels on the steel uh, rail has basic advantage of low rolling resistance we know that the uh, what happened is actually the 
the wheels of the railways are actually made of these steel okay and uh, the movement of steel wheels okay on the steel rails has the advantages of low rolling resistance so if there will be low rolling resistance this will reduce the haulage cost because of low tractive resistance right so when we'll come to road transport the tractive resistance due to a pneumatic tire on metal road is almost five times compared to that of wheel on rails right because what happens there uh, we have the pneumatic tire and here we have the steel rails the steel rails on uh, as well as the steel wheels so when the steel wheels is uh, rolling on that steel rails then there will be low rolling rates but here what happened when this pneumatic tire these rolls on the metal roll then due to the uh, tractive resistance what happens is that there is the more cost of the haulage okay so but in rail transport this reduces the haulage cost because of the low tractive resistance but here the more the tractive resistance the haulage cost will be more so the first feature is related to the tractive resistance now right of entry what uh, what happen is that a railway track is defined uh, you know on two ways okay and is within protected limit okay you have to travel on that particular rail zone okay it has been defined it has been defined that this is your path okay trains work as per prescribed schedule and no other vehicle has the right of entry except at a specific a specified level of the crossings okay so it is all predefined okay it means when a train is moving from gorakhpur to delhi then there will uh, there no no other trains will be allowed to enter uh, on that path okay and uh, the schedule is basically defined also so what it hap what happens due to this there is then less chances of the you know accidents but what happens uh, in the road road also do have well defined limit but can be used by any vehicular traffic and even by pedestrian they are open to all but uh, right of entry in the case of rail transport it is not open to everyone it is not uh, open to everyone but uh, during road transport it is open to everyone if you are traveling on a road uh, anyone come on on your way even any animal stray animal any person uh, with uh, other vehicle can come to your path okay but this is not the case with the rail transport right now the cost analysis owing to the heavy infrastructure the initial as well as the maintenance cost of railway line is always high you know because the infrastructure is quite uh, very heavy in case of uh, rail transport so the initial cost and as well as the maintenance cost undoubtedly it will be uh, larger than this road transport because the cost of construction and maintenance of road is comparatively cheaper okay when we'll talk about the gradients and curves the gradients of railway tracks are uh, flatter normally not more than 1 in 100 and curves are limited up to only 10 degree on the broad so the maximum degree of the curve is 10 degree which is for the broad pitch okay and uh, and the uh, roads are constructed normally with a steeper gradient of up to 1 in 30 and relatively much sharper curve but uh, in case of rail transport the uh, the gradients are uh, flatter uh, normally not more than 1 in 100 okay and the curves are also limited up to 10 degree but it can go up to 30 degree in the case of road transport okay now the flexibility of the movement due to the defined routes and facilities required for the reception and dispatch of train railway can be used only between the fixed point okay there is no no any flexibility if uh, the route has been defined between the uh, gorakhpur and lucknow you can travel between uh, between the gorakhpur and lucknow one during that time you can't travel from the gorakhpur uh, to kolkata okay but road transports have much more flexibility in movement can provide door to door services okay uh, it means uh, when you have to travel 
from Gorakhpur to Lucknow, you have to travel from the one station to the other station. But uh, in case of road transport, if there is uh, any flexibility required, you need to uh, provide door-to-door -door services. You can provide the door-to-door -door services using the road transport. Okay. Now coming to the other point, that is the environmental pollution. Railway has minimum adverse effect on the environment. Okay. And road transport create comparatively greater pollution than the railways. Okay. We all know that the uh, if the environment from the environmental uh, aspect, the uh, railway has minimum adverse effects, whereas the road has, uh, you know, greater pollution adverse effect. Now, organization and control, uh, the railways are government undertaking with their own organization, whereas uh, uh, bearing member state government transport, road transport is managed by the private sector. Okay. Suitability, the railways are best suited for carrying heavy goods and large number of passengers over long distance. And road transport is best suited for carrying lighter goods and a smaller number of passengers over short distance. Okay, so this was basically a comparison between the rail transport and the road transport through various features. And those various features were as uh, given as uh, uh, in the screen, that is tractive resistance, right of entry, cost analysis, radiance and curves, flexibility of movement, environment pollution, organization and control, and suitability. Right. Now, we'll talk about the development of India. How this development took place actually. You know, in, 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 in 19th century, before the introduction of railways, India was a country with extremely poor means of communication. Okay. We'll talk, when we'll talk about the communication part okay so before this 19th century india was you know declared as a uh, with a poor means of the communication it was having a poor means of communication but in 1844 the first proposal of the construction of railway on india was submitted to the east india company so the entire scenario actually started uh, this entire uh, railway came into picture from the 1844 and in 1844 the proposal was submitted to East India Company right and in 1853 first railway line was opened and that was between Bombay and Thane okay so the first proposal was submitted in 1854 and the first railway line was opened in 1853 and between the two places that was Bombay and the Thane Right. In 1905, railway board was established with one president and two members. So students, uh, you have to be very careful with these, uh, you know, data that in 1844, the proposal was submitted. In 1853, the railway line was opened and between Bombay and Thane. Okay. And the third one is in 1905, railway board was established with one president and two members and uh, in 1939 the total route of India in kilometer was 65,850 okay so when we talk about the development it all started from 1844 then in 1853 uh, railway line was opened in 1905 railway board was uh, you know established was constituted with one president and two members and in 1939, finally, the route was about of 65,850 kilometers. So this entire organization, this entire development, we can divide into it into nine different five-year plans. Okay. Now we'll start with the first five-year plan. First five-year plan was actually a plan between a span of 1951 to 1956. Okay. So what are the significant features and what were the salient points of that first five year plan I will mention in this lecture and uh, point wise I will mention uh, salient points of each and every five year plans. Okay. So in first five year plans, which was uh, between the 1951 to 1956, the first point was that out of the total plan expenditure of 2378 crore 
the railway were allotted 257 crore. Okay, so the annual budget of our country was 2378 crore, and among uh, that, 257 crore was allotted for the railways, right? Rehabilitation of railway asset was the main objective, okay? Industries boosted up their locomotive production during these years. Considerably helped India in achieving the self-sufficiency. So what are the salient points? The first is that 2,378 crores of rupees were allotted for the development of uh, the entire nation and 257 crore was allotted for the railway development you know rehabilitation was the main objective and the locomotive production was the second objective okay now coming to the second five year period, which was spanning between 1956 and 1961 the second five year plan had a provision of 896 crore okay in previous we, we we looked at it was 257 crore now it was you know increased to 896 crore for the development of indian railways out of total expenditure of uh, 4800 crores okay many new lines were opened and many new locomotives and coaches were placed online you know the industry was boosting very significantly in this phase new lines were opened new locomotives and new coaches were placed online on the railway line and there was a considerable progress uh, in the electrification of the railway so the electrification of the railway it all started in the 1956 and 1961 phase that is uh, categorized under the second five year okay now the third one is third five year plan. okay the third five year plan actually uh, comes under a span of 1961 to 1966 the second five year plan had a provision of 1470 crores for the development of indian railways out of total expenditure of rupees 7500 crores okay it is started from 257 crores then came to the 896 crores then a significant uh, you know leap was taken to 1470 crores I mean, the government was you know very focused about the development of this indian railway in our country and this plan actually provided the acquisition of 270 new locomotives and 157133 new wagons and 7879 new coaching vehicles so these are actually the important data which you have to take care about it that in this plan 200 2070 new locomotives were actually deployed 157133 new wagons were deployed as well as 7879 coaching vehicles were also deployed there was a provision uh, made for the electrification uh, for about 2400 route in kilometers okay a length of 2400 kilometers new lines were also constructed okay so this phase actually saw as a significant achievement in the indian railways uh, including the electrification as well as including the acquisition of different locomotives wagons and coaching vehicles okay now the fourth and fifth five year plan uh, actually, the fourth five-year plan was from 1969 to 1974 uh, with the objective of the modernization of the railway. The major objective was now focused on the modernization of the railway and improving the operational efficiency of the system by more intense utilization, right? Now, the fifth five-year plan was actually between 1974 and 1978. Uh, development of rapid transport system in uh, metropolitan cities a sum of 2200 crores were allotted out of total of 39300 crores it means it has started from 257 crores from the first year first five year plan and you can look in the fifth five year plan actually the uh, allocated budget was about 2200 crores okay 
Now, coming to the sixth five-year plan, it uh, ranges between 1980 to 1985. The main objective was the limited resources of the uh, railways should be used for rehabilitation of assets, and the stress was to use existing resources in best possible manner for getting high operation efficiency. So uh, this sixth five-year plan actually ranges between 1980 to 1985, and uh, the major objective was that the limited resources of the railways should be used for the rehabilitation of assets, and the stress was given to use the existing resources in best possible manner for getting the higher operating uh, efficiency. Okay. Now coming to this uh, seventh five-year plan, uh, 1985 to 1990, this provided an outlay of 12,334 crores. Okay, introduction of computer-based free operation information system and computerization of passenger reservation. So students, this phase actually saw a tremendous improvement. You know. Before this phase, there was no computerization of the passenger reservation, but in this phase, there was the computerization of the passenger reservation, as well as the amputation of the capacity for manufacturing of passenger coaches, electrical multiple units, as well as the electric locomotive. Right. Now, coming to the eighth five year plan, again, the outlay was about 27,000. 202 crores and this plan actually ranges between 1992 to 1997. Emphasis was given on the modernization of the system to reduce operating costs and to improve the reliability and convert a length of 6,000 kilometer of meter gauge and narrow gauge tracks to the broad gauge. Before this in our country, the entire length was, uh, the entire length of railway line was confined to this meter gauge and narrow gauge. Uh, I will talk about this meter gauge and narrow gauge in, in my coming uh, modules and the lectures. So you don't have to worry about it. Uh, but uh, these are actually the technical terms that is meter gauge, narrow gauge, broad gauge. So a length of about 6000 kilometer of the broad gauge was converted uh, in, during this uh, eight five year plan. And the ninth five-year plan is uh, actually uh, a, a, a final five-year plan, which was ranging between 1997 to 2002. There was an outlay of 45,413 crores, that is 14.1% of the total plan. Generation of rail transport capacity to handle increased freight and passenger traffic Completion of the replacement, rehabilitation, and renewal of over aged assets to continue with the policy of uni gauge throughout the country. It means the country was now focused, this railway board was focused on, uh, on a single gauge that is the broad gauge. Okay, introduction of 4,000 horsepower diesel locomotives and 6,000 horsepower electro locomotives. So this was actually the different phases of the Indian Railway, which is started from the 1951, from the first five-year plan to the ninth five-year plan, which ranges between 1997 to 2002. Okay. Now, uh, the next topic is the organization of Indian Railway. I have talked about the different phases of Indian Railway. Now, organization of IR, that is organization of now, the first thing you, uh, you have to know that uh, you have to understand it, that it is the one of the biggest public undertaking uh, sector of our country. Capital charge of about 560,000 5, 5, million. Okay. And the executive authority in connection with the administration of railway west with the central government and the same has been delegated to the railway board as per Indian Railway Act 1890 and Indian Tramway Act of 1816. Okay, so it is one of the biggest public undertaking with a capital charge of, of about 5,60,000 million. Okay, 
and uh, this entire authority comes under the central government and it also comes under the railway board under the indian railway act that is 1890 and indian tramway act of 1816 okay no we'll talk about the uh, railway board actually so railway board what is actually railway board okay so railway board exercises all the powers of central government in respect of regulation construction maintenance and operation of railway okay so it is a body which is used to regulate construct maintain and operate the rail it consists of a chairman a financial commissioner and five other functional members okay the chairman reports to the minister for railway so that who is the authority of this entire railway the first from the central government point of view it is the railway minister and the chairman comes under this railway minister okay so this chairman who is he he is actually the chairman of railway board and this railway board actually comes under this uh, ministry railway ministry okay the member of railway board are separately in charge of the matters uh, related to staff civil electrical mechanical and traffic okay now we'll talk about the next topic in the next slide see uh, presently indian railway is divided into 17 different zones okay so this uh, railway boards come under ministry of railway and who is the authority railway minister okay and who is the who takes the authority of this railway board it is the chairman of railway and this rail, uh, railway board consists of chairman then under him it is financial commissioner and then other five functional member this is actually the uh, you know protocol of the indian railways and it is presently divided into 17 different zones each zone is actually administered by general manager assisted by additional general manager and hod of different discipline namely civil engineering mechanical operating commercial accounts security signal telecommunication electrical personal medical etc okay so it starts like this railway minister then railway board chairman of the railway board financial officer and five other different members then it has been divided into seven different 17 different zones then who takes care of that 17 different zones it is the general manager who is assisted by additional general manager and these additional general manager are assisted by the hods of different discipline that is civil engineering mechanical operating commercial etc zonal railway is further divided into 3 to 6 divisions okay now this 17 zones are now divided into 3 to 6 divisions and each division work under control of the divisional railway manager that is dr okay now we'll talk about the other topic in the other slide 